Welcome back to the podcast, guys. Hope y'all doing well out there. In this video, we're going to be talking about the latest news regarding Christina Bob and the Justice Department's investigation into obstruction of justice when it comes to the Mar-a-Lago search. So the reason that the FBI had to do a raid in the first place is because Donald Trump and his lawyers intentionally or not lied to NARA and the Justice Department saying that there were no more classified documents or other government documents that needed to be turned over back to NARA, okay? But there was a source inside of Mar-a-Lago saying that there were more documents that were classified or government documents that Trump was not supposed to have. And that's the reason that the Justice Department and the FBI conducted the uh, raid, very polite raid, on Trump's property, okay? So Christina Bob may be in trouble because she was the lawyer who signed off on the certification for that subpoena, saying that all responsive materials to that grand jury subpoena from May had been turned over back to NARA or the Justice Department. OK, so she's in she may be in trouble because of that. But the latest news is that she talked to the Justice Department on Friday, last Friday, um, and she told the Justice Department that she was not the one who actually um, checked to make sure that all responsive materials had been turned over. She's blaming Cochran, who is the main lawyer for Donald Trump, Evan Cochran. And she's saying that she was told to sign off on this and she was actually hesitant to sign off on this document. So basically, she's trying to blame to sw switch the blame on to Evan Cochran, saying, I just signed the document. This guy told me that all responsive materials had been turned over because we know now that there are other classes classified documents on the premises that Trump was not supposed to have that were not declassified. And even if they were, it's still a crime to have them. Um, these documents were still there. We found the Justice Department found that out because there was a leaker from Mar-a-Lago who told them, hey, they still have Trump still has classified documents on the premises. They were not all turned over. And then and because of that reason, the Justice Department uh, did the FBI raid. They ordered the FBI to raid um, Trump's Mar-a-Lago to get those documents back because he's a thief. OK, and a traitor. OK, but that was all, always clear since January 6th. Uh, so anyways, before we get to the specifics of all this, and I'm going to show you guys the grand jury subpoena. I'm going to show you guys the document that she signed and why she's in trouble. And if she's in trouble, is she going to get indicted? We're going to answer all those questions in this video. But first, I want to talk about Christina Bob, because Christina Bob before she started gobbling Donald Trump's balls and, and turned traitor against America, Christina Bob was an honorable person who worked for the United States Marine Corps. She was a JAG lawyer, okay? And she would have looked like Meg Austin here. That's the dress whites for uh, the U.S. Navy JAG Corps, the Judge Advocate Advocates General, which is basically a Navy lawyer, a Navy JAG. She was a Marine JAG. The Marines are under the Department of the Navy since 1834. Uh, so she was... Uh, or she was a respectable person who was actually a patriot uh, um, representing veterans in um, courts martial and also in uh, administrative separation matters. So basically, the United States military military and all the branches under it work under what's called the, uh, the Uniform Court of Military Justice, okay, the UCMJ. Uh, federal law applies in military courts, but also the UCMJ applies. There's something called military law that applies in these military court courts marshals. OK, and she was a defense attorney representing some of these soldiers. OK, so she was an honorable person at one point before she decided to turn traitor, go work for an American network. And now she's in all this trouble because she got involved with traitor Trump. OK, so this is her bio. Christina served in the United States Marine Corps as a judge advocate general, which is a Navy lawyer. Uh, during her time on active duty, she was an operational law attorney in uh, Helmand Province, Afghanistan. Uh, and also she worked in Quantico, Virginia as a defense counsel representing Marines and sailors in courts, marshals and administrative separ separation hearings, which is what defense attorneys do. Those are military uh, courts. OK. Um, it, uh, resolving issues inside the military because there are criminals inside the military. And some of them are not criminal matters. They're civil matters having to do with pay and rank and things like that. Uh, so it's not always uh, criminal stuff. There's civil matters as well in military courts. Uh, she also worked in Europe and Africa. So she, this is somebody who has a, who's actually well, well educated. She worked in the military. She was a respectable person, but she decided to leave all that and do something even more important by going to work for a network of traitors uh, at One American News Network, who's still pushing the big lie, by the way. And she started doing that in June 10th. Now, to be fair to her, she started working for them before 
Donald Trump went uh, traitor in 2021. But nevertheless, even after that, after he went traitor, she decided to go and be a lawyer for him, for a traitor. OK, after January 6 and all the horrible things that Donald Trump did on that day and before that day, trying to overthrow the American Constitution and stay in power as president, even though he's a fat, giant loser. OK, so she decided to leave an honorable position working for the military, representing veterans and decided to go work for a traitor called Donald Trump. OK, but I don't know exactly when she started being a lawyer for him, but any law I would if I was a lawyer for Trump, I would have left even before January 6th, but definitely after January 6th, I'm gone. Okay. No way I'm representing this traitor. Okay. But nevertheless, that's, that was not a, a bother for her because she's got MAGA brains and she's been infected with her whole life revolves around hating Democrats. You can just go and read her Twitter uh, account at this point, which I did this morning before making this video. She's turned into a vile person who's involved in the battlefield of uh, ridiculous ideas between the Democrats and the Republicans. And she's all about pushing the R team. Uh, she's bought into the, the, the party wars, which is always going to destroy your uh, destroy your life, basically. And it has. Okay, She's under criminal investigation because of this fact. So that's some of her background. So she used to be an honorable person. So before I uh, start calling her names, I want to make sure that everybody knew that she used to be an honorable person who did some good work for the military. Okay, So I respect the position that she had. But since then, she has done less than uh, honorable things, uh, especially lying for Donald Trump. She came on... She came on... Um, what was it, News, Net, News Nation, and, and made a clown of herself trying to defend Donald Trump, saying that, oh, no, we turned over all responsive materials. Turned out not. OK, now, because of the, all those lies that she told, now she's in trouble. She's be, she had to answer questions to, to the Justice Department prosecutors um, because of the fact that she signed off on this document. OK, so I forgot to show you guys the document. So this is the document that she's in trouble for signing. So this is this was in the Justice Department's filing on 830, where they explained the timeline of events, where um, how, how all this went down. Right. They asked nicely. They uh, issued subpoenas. Nothing worked. That's why they did the raid. They explain all that here. And they uh, despite the fact that her name is uh, blanked out here, we know for a fact that she signed off on this. So this this certification was in response to this grand jury subpoena that was issued in D.C. asking for all national security related and top secret documents to be turned over, uh, turned over back to the government. OK, that was signed off. That was issued in May. OK, so this was an official demand by the government for for Donald Trump to turn over all responsive materials to these to these uh, requests here. OK, all top secret documents were to be turned back over to the government. But they didn't do that, as we saw from the documents, which I may have a picture of here. There are top secret documents all over the place in Mar-a-Lago, including Donald Trump's drawers. So he did not; they did not turn over all the documents. So, so after this subpoena was issued, uh, one of Donald Trump, Trump's lawyers signed off on it, saying that all responsive documents to the subpoena had been turned over, and that was. Christina Bob. Okay, despite the fact that it's blanked out here, we know for a fact that she's the one who signed off on this. And so let me just read you guys a little bit of this. Based upon the information that has been provided to me, I am authorized to certify on behalf of the office of Donald J. Trump the following. A diligent search was conducted of the boxes that were moved from the White House to Florida. This search was conducted after receipt of the subpoena in order to locate any and all documents uh, that are responsive to the subpoena. Any and all responsive documents accompany this certification and no copy written uh, notation or reproduction of any uh, kind was retained as to any responsive document. I swear at or affirm that the above statements are true and correct to the best of my knowledge. So she signed off on this. Christina Bob signed off on this. And this was an unadulterated lie or a misconception on her part. And that's what she's claiming now. In the latest reporting, according to NBC News, three people familiar with her talks to the Justice Department said that she she uh, she never verified everything. She was just simply told to sign off on this. OK, Bob, who was Trump's custodian of record at the time, did not draft the statement, according to three sources who did not want to comment publicly. Instead, Trump's legal lawyer in this case at the time, Evan Cochran, drafted it and told her to sign it. Hey. This is what she's saying. I didn't sign. I didn't check anything. OK, Cochran simply told me to sign this. So I signed it. That's her excuse. Who knows if it's true or not? Cochran is the main lawyer for Trump. So it may be true, but we don't know. Uh, we'll see what Cochran has to say. He's ba she's basically putting all the blame on Cochran, saying that he's the one who told me to sign off on this. So don't blame me. 
Dr. Cochran. Uh, Bob told investigators, according to sources, Bob also spoke to investigators about Trump legal advisor Boris Epstein, who she said uh, did not help draft the statement, but was minimally involved in discussions about the records, according to sources. Epstein's cell phone was seized last month by the FBI, according to the New York Times, citing uh, familiar sources, blah, blah, blah. Bob did not return message seeking comments, so she didn't want to talk to the media. She is talking today on social media and calling everything fake news, uh, which is what all Trump uh, morons do. Before Bob signed the document, she insisted it be rewritten with the disclaimer that she was certifying Trump had no more records based upon the information that was that has been provided to me. The source said of what she told investigators. Bob identified the person who gave her that information as Cochran, Evan Cochran. According to sources, she had to insist she had to insist on that disclaimer twice before she signed it, uh, another source said. So there's three sources that they talk to, and I suspect that this source <laughs> is her defense attorney because this is what this source said. She is not criminally liable, another source said. Uh, she is not going to be charged. She, she is not pointing fingers. Yes, she is. Uh, she's simply a witness for the truth. So they talked to three people. I'm guessing two people were from the Justice Department, prosecutors or media people, and this person this third person was her defense attorney, okay? Because that sounds like something that a defense attorney would say. My client didn't do anything wrong. She was simply, she's simply telling the truth, okay? So that's her story. That's what she's sticking by. And it may be true for all intents and purposes. I don't know yet. We have to listen to what Cochran has to say. Now, all the blame is now on Cochran. Did Cochran intentionally lie to the Justice Department and NARA and say that all documents had been produced? When we know for a fact now that all documents responsive to the subpoena had not been produced, which is why the FBI raid found 103 top secret and otherwise classified documents on the premises when the subpoena specifically asked for top secret documents to be turned over. So let me show you guys that one more time because this is important. This this is the subpoena issued by a D.C. grand jury. It literally says top secret documents here, multiple levels of different top secret, uh, no foreign HCS and, uh, and Oricon. I explained all these classification in another video that I did. Uh, so all these classification levels, those documents are right here. These were these, according to Cochran and, and Bob, who signed off on it, all these were turned over. But uh, according to their certification, that's why it's false. This is all the stuff that the just not all the stuff, some of the stuff that the Justice Department found, the FBI found during their raid. So that means that this document is a lie. This certification promising that everything had been turned over is a lie. OK, or um, or a misinterpretation of the facts. So Bob is claiming that she didn't know what was going on and she simply just did whatever Cochran was telling her to do. That's her excuse. OK, so. Let's now talk about um, Bob's uh, criminal liability here, okay? So it remains to be seen, and the Justice Department is looking at this as a criminal matter. As you guys may remember, I did a video back when this August 30th document was put out. I talked about how they basically destroyed Donald Trump's lies in that uh, in that document. They explained how they tried multiple times to get these documents nicely. They He didn't want to comply. That's why they did the raid. They explained everything in that document, uh, and... I think three or four times they said that Donald Trump's lawyers um, misconstrued the truth, a.k.a. lied to them about the fact that these documents had been turned over. So the Justice Department has been looking into this as a criminal matter of obstruction of justice, of trying to prevent the FBI and NARA from getting these documents back. OK, that's why she had to talk to the DOJ. You don't go and talk to prosecutors because it's not a big deal. You talk to them because it is a big deal. OK, like but. Her lawyers are trying to downplay it, saying that she doesn't have any criminal liability. She didn't do anything wrong. She was simply listening to Cochran. Go talk to him. That's what they're saying. Basically, they are pointing fingers. They are. OK, so let's not lie about that. They are pointing fingers like Cochran did it. Cochran told me to sign it. I didn't know. I didn't check. OK, and she says that I wanted another section saying that I had not verified it. That is not in the in the in the document. OK, so she, her lawyer is saying that. She wanted a section put in here saying that she had not verified it, but Cochran had verified it. That's not here. OK, it just says that I swear and affirm that the above statements are true and correct to the best of my knowledge. And that's their entire defense. To the best of her knowledge, she did. She thought that all documents had been turned over. That's the legal cover. These words are her entire defense. Cochran lied to me and therefore I inadvertently lied to the FBI and NARA. That's this is her entire case. 
to the best of my knowledge, I didn't know. And it may work because as I explain all the time, criminal law is based on intent. The prosecutors will not go after somebody un unless they think she intentionally kept these documents. She knew that the documents were there at the premises and she intentionally lied about them. They would have to prove that to a jury if she wants, if they want to get obstruction of justice charges to be valid and to be, you know, to get a conviction on those. So prosecutor, it's very unlikely that she'll be prosecuted. It's very unlikely that Cochran will be uh, prosecuted unless they can find that Cochran intentionally hid these documents, intentionally hid the fact that Donald Trump had these documents, but they didn't want to turn it over. Trump either um, directly or indirectly told Cochran to lie to the FBI. And that's why Cochran told Bob to basically sign off on this letter. OK, now, good and bad here. So it's possible that Cochran is the one who told her to do it. But Cochran's signature is not what's on the record. She signed off on this document. She's the one who's in trouble. That's why she's being talked to by the Justice Department prosecutors. OK, I don't know if Cochran has been questioned yet. After this, they'll likely talk to Cochran next. OK, to see what the truth is, try to get at the truth. But if both of them shut up, then then if the Justice Department wants to prosecute somebody for obstruction of justice, they will have to find independent verification of their lies. So if they want to prosecute Cochran or B Christina Bob, they will have to find independent evidence that Bob and Cochran knew that the documents were on the premises, but lied to the Justice Department anyways. They would have to find criminal intent if they want to prosecute anybody. And that's very unlikely. OK but not impossible okay so right now i am leaning on the side of nobody will be prosecuted for obstruction of justice on this partic particular uh, account because it's very rare for lawyers to be prosecuted they they always find a way to cover their ass somehow by saying i didn't know she's blaming cochran and cochran's gonna blame trump saying that my client didn't let me know that these documents were there so that's why i I believe that all documents responsive to the subpoena had been turned over. I didn't know that Trump was hiding this stuff in his drawers and in, in the storage room. So that's going to be Cochran's excuse. Everybody's going to blame the next guy down the line. And Trump is going to say, I had no idea. I, You know what he's going to say. Uh, he's going to say, everything is declassified. I did nothing wrong. And my lawyers are stupid. There, He's going to blame the lawyers. OK, because... It, why and, and it would actually work because Trump is an idiot. He doesn't know anything about the law. So that's why he has lawyers. Right. So everybody has somebody else to blame. But uh, the Justice Department can make, break that cycle of the blame game by finding independently verifiable uh, evidence. Who knows if that will happen? But that's where things stand now. OK. All right. So that was longer than I want it to be. But that's all I got to say for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, make sure to like the video, subscribe, hit the bell, press all for future videos. And if you want to support my work, you can do so on Patreon. There'll be a link in the description box down below. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys next time. Peace. Dread to control. Control to dread. Go ahead. Judge Death has escaped. I repeat, Judge Death has escaped. I recommend we initiate Operation Lockdown immediately. Chief Judge has already begun the procedure. Operation Lockdown? After the last time Death escaped, a plan was developed to deal with the situation. Fred, where are you going? Back to the convention center. I got questions that need answering. Wait for me! <laughs> We interrupt our Necropolis Anniversary Day programs to bring you this news flash. Judge Death has escaped. I repeat, Judge Death has escaped. The alien super fiend broke out of his prison after terrorist action. The judges have instituted a citywide curfew taking effect in 60 minutes. All citizens are to return home immediately. Anyone found outside during curfew will be shot on sight. All travel is suspended. The Atlantic Tunnel is sealed shut. No one gets in or out. Once again, Judge Death has escaped. The alien super fiend broke out of his prison after terrorist action.